Hey guys, Joe Pelago, San Francisco, Wintercoin World Headquarters. We, as a team, got this really cool over-the-counter buy, and it totally inspired me to really dig into some kind of nerdy, kind of technical aspects of how a coin is made. So this is an actual U.S. Mint die, okay? A lot of collectors don't even know what this is. And that's, again, what kind of inspired me uh, to really dig in and understand how a coin is manufactured. What it does is it really alleviates the misunderstanding that's out there about die varieties. I feel like one to a hundred times a day, we either get a phone call, a walk-in, or an appointment with someone who has some very rare variety that they found. They watched a video on YouTube. They want $10,000 for it, which is fine if it really was an error or variety. A lot of times there's post-mint damage, also machine doubling as well. Well, I'll kind of dig into that so that we're all on the same page. And there's just a lot of videos and information online that's truly not accurate. So what I thought to do is, again, when I saw this come over the counter, I thought, wow, we can really use this as an opportunity to explain to people how coins are made and how varieties can actually come about. I'll dig into it. I'll get started. Basically, I'm going to walk through the design and manufacturing of a coin, and then we're going to dig in a little on varieties as well. Basically, we got here a proof 19 68 Kennedy half dollar, right? Just over 3 million of these were made. So how it's made, right, is a coin is, coin starts as a blank planchet. So really this is how a coin looks before it's struck, right? And then a die is going to strike the design onto the blank planchet. So this die, for example, you know, was struck onto this blank planchet and that's what made the Kennedy half. Now you might kind of be looking too here, uh, as you can see, it is a defaced die the US Mint would never release a die with the actual designs in it because they don't want people obviously making their own coins. So this is a defaced die. Obviously, if you can imagine, it would have the reverse of the Kennedy half dollar and that is what is gonna get struck into the coin at extremely high pressure and therefore that's how you make a coin. Now to get even nerdier and dig in deeper, how is a die made? So I'll, I'll rewind to the beginning. Put yourself in, we'll say 1964 in this case, we're gonna design the Kennedy half dollar together. What we're probably gonna do is start with some sketches, right? Okay, we want Kennedy to look this big and you know, okay, we want the date here. We want in God we trust here. You're kind of mapping it out. Then you're gonna get to some plaster molds, very big ones as well. You wanna visualize it and it's Entirety. And so once we all agree on the design, what we're gonna do is make a master hub. So what a master hub is, it literally this coin, if you will, this exact size, everything that is gonna be this coin, but on a very hard piece of metal, almost like a trailer hitch. If you remember 20 minutes ago, it feels like, I mentioned that was about a mintage, a little over 3 million on this coin. So one die is not gonna be able to create all three million coins. It'll break over time, it'll wear out over time. What'll happen is the master hub is going to, they're gonna push the die down onto the master hub and that's gonna transfer the design onto the die. They're gonna make multiple dies in order to fill the entire mintage. I don't know numbers, there are some experts that do, but you know, for conversation's sake, let's say each die can make 50 to 100,000 coins. I don't know what that number is. Feel free to comment below if you do. I would love to learn that. Where you will start seeing die varieties, okay, let's say, again, we'll keep it simple. Let's say they made 10 dies for the mintage run, right? But on the third die, when they're pressing the die down into the master hub, maybe the hub shifted a little, or there was some kind of, any kind of variation that allowed for the, the actual die and the hub to shift in the creation process, which created some doubling. That's where double dies come from. I actually have two of the most famous double dies here to kind of reference this visually. First, we got the uh, 55 here, very, very famous. So as you can see, the date is doubled up. That's because when they were pressing the die onto the hub, it, it shifted and moved and created this 3D doubling effect. One of the other most famous and arguably scarcer double dies is a 69S double die. You can kind of see there on the date as well. And so what you'll see is, is diagnostics. This is the key. When it comes to varieties, when anyone says they have a variety, it has to be diagnostics that are related to the die. And what that means is it's gonna stamp the same design on a lot of different planchets, right? 
There you go, I'm, I'm a machine now. So we got multiple coins being struck with the same die with the same defect. So that little run of coins is all gonna have these matching little markers on them. And that's what's gonna allow for us to say, yeah, that is a 72 double die or 55 double die or whatever that is, because it's repeatable. And you'll also see this a lot in VAMs for Morgan and Peace dollars. A really interesting one is, you know, these dies would get used aggressively. And so if you've ever heard of a die crack, that's because when the die actually came down and struck the planchet, there was so much pressure that it actually like cracked a little piece of it. And then you'll see that same crack get stamped into a whole print run. To kind of bring it all to a close and land the plane, if you will, the dies are what creates varieties. So if you see some like, you know, 2004 penny, and it has like a little bit of, of doubling on it or something like that, and it's not documented, it's not seen across a wide range of coins that are, are notated and studied, then it's probably not gonna fall under a, an official die variety variation of the original mintage. So what it really needs to have is repeatable strikings. It needs to be researched. And also too, you want to avoid machine doubling. I mentioned that earlier. So there are some scenarios where a die is hitting a blank planchet. You'll see this a lot in the 60s. The machine was just kind of a little bit of vibration. And so when it struck, it kind of, I don't know if you guys can visualize that with me, kind of vibrated a little. And so what that'll do is create a very even shifted doubling effect, but that doesn't mean that the die was doubled up. Doesn't mean there was anything wrong with the die. It was just some machine manufacturing, really, if you want to kind of overly simplify it, kind of some poor quality striking. They were trying to make a lot of coins back then. They weren't really worried about any of this collectible die variety stuff. So I think that about covers it. My goal of kind of wanting to sit down with you all and go through this very technical piece of numismatics is I want someone that if they're watching a video on YouTube about why their Sacagawea dollars is worth $5,000 and all these varieties and all this stuff, I also want them to be able to watch a video like this and have all of the information available, right? Once you want to make a decision, whatever it is, with as much information as you can, I would like this to be a, a tool for collectors to reference that helps them understand how a coin is made, helps them understand how varieties could come to be, helps collectors and dealers alike. So I hope you learned something today. I really appreciate you all taking some time to watch this. Hope it wasn't too nerdy and uh, take care.